Welcome to All Nations House of Prayer, a ministry on the move. We're excited that you joined us today, and we pray that you're ready to receive a life-changing word from the Lord. And now, we invite you to participate in our worship service. God. God bless you. I'm Apostle Garfield Curlin, and I'm glad to be here tonight uh, as we are going to have a great conversation uh, about the things that are happening in our world. Uh, praise God. We are in the midst of a pandemic and things are happening, hurricanes and just uh, racial intent uh, tensions are going on in our world. And so we are going to have a great conversation and we want you to be able uh, to get involved in it also. Uh, praise God. We have with us tonight, uh, to my left, we have uh, Elder Holly Watkins. Uh, we have Evangelist Latana Rudolph. We have uh, Elder uh, Alex Vance and we have Minister Carla Bell. And we are going to be discussing some things uh, that concerning you, concerning the family, concerning the time that we're in. Uh, praise God. So share this with someone. Let someone know uh, that uh, we are talking tonight uh, as a family. Praise God, because we know that the family, uh, not only the family of the church, but your family, personal family, has been affected by everything that is happening in our land today. The Bible tells us that men should always pray and not to faint. So we want you to know that we're praying for you, praying for your family, praying for your situation, because we trust God. We put our confidence in the things of God. We set our affections on things above. So we're going to get started here. Praise God. And we just want you to be able to ch share, chime in, whatever you may want to uh, say uh, to us. Or you may have a question. Please feel free to do so. But we're going to start off tonight. And uh, we're going to uh, point this question, praise God, to Minister uh, Carla Bell who has a nice family, praise God. And uh, we're just going to ask you, uh, Sister Bell, uh, how, do you, how has the corona, uh, virus? how has it affected you, affected your family uh, during this time uh, that we're in? We have a very busy family. I have a daughter in college. I have a daughter that's in a lot of activities. I have a very active husband. So our family was always on the go all the time. And so with the pandemic, it caused us to have to come back together, uh, dinner time with everybody around the table, uh, more time to have conversation, discuss things with each other, find ways of uh, enjoying each other's company again because we had become so busy that we were like two ships passing in the night. So for us, it was a time to come back together as a family and enjoying each other as a family. What kind of conversations have you had uh, during this time uh, that you have, uh, your family has come together, you're sitting around the table, uh, because we understand that several things are going on. Uh, I know that you have uh, uh, young children and yet you have children in college you have one still in high school so how did they feel about being quarantined being uh, social distance what are they saying well my daughter that's in college she's very active and she's used to being out a lot and so it was getting kind of hard for her uh, but we just found ourselves just enjoying ourselves with what's going on um, Autumn, she has a underlying condition, uh, athletic asthma, and so we had to really discuss with her about staying distant, and so having young kids in the house is kind of hard sometimes because they want to be with their friends and stuff like that. For me, I'm a homebody. I love going out, but I don't mind being stuck in the house because I can just enjoy myself by myself, but they were having a hard time with it. So the discussions... Um, 
anything that was going on in the community, things that's going on here in Hopkinsville, things that's going on in the world, we just found it a time just to open up and discuss everything that was going on. Have you all, any of you all, uh, uh, have uh, found that uh, during this time of social distance, during this time of quarantine, have you found your family getting closer or getting on each other's nerves? Uh, what, 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 what have you, Brother Vance, how are you? Well, for as me, uh, most of my children, my children are grown, but I have a lot of grandchildren in, ranging from age uh, 15, 16, all the way back down. Uh, and sometimes when they come over, you know, we have to make sure that we sanitize them, um, make sure that they you know, we take their shoes off and make sure everything is good to go for as bringing anything into the house. But for as uh, children themselves, our, you know, grown children make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. And we try and keep them close to us as possible, but we have to let them be their sel themselves. So what it does is that it brings you together, but yet there's some that may want to make their own decisions, and it, you may not like it, but they're still grown, and they're still your children. So we have to love them anyway, work through this pandemic, and try and help them in any way we can, but yet them, let them be their own adult, let them run their own house. Have you found yourself having more family uh, prayers, uh, discussing uh, how this pandemic and things that we're going through have affected them mentally because I have noticed uh, uh, situations and things that uh, people are really having hard times mentally uh, during this time. Uh, in my family, I've been affected by it because I had a sister that had the coronavirus and then I had a brother that had the coronavirus and then people within the church itself has had uh, the coronavirus so it's dealing with each one of them differently and I noticed that even after uh, you have uh, tested negative there's still after effects and so when we come together we share about uh, how this uh, has affected them how it has affected the family totally totally because uh my sister wendy uh praise god was in the hospital over 20 something days on the ventilator and uh her testimony is is that uh she flatlined at least twice and uh we had to pray to god pray her back the the, the saints everywhere was praying for her and uh, now when we discuss it, we discuss how uh, uh, this pandemic, how dangerous it is and how real it is. And, and sometimes I don't think people realize how dangerous it really is until it affects them personally. And it really affected us really personal, which I think brought our family more closer together. It brought us together. Uh, I know during this time, uh, my faith level has really increased uh, to believe God, to trust God, because I've seen what God has done in the midst of our family. And uh, uh, my brother David uh, just uh, uh, tested negative. Uh, he's had it for about two weeks. And uh, just talking to him and talking through it, uh, just showed us and he's he told me he said he wished he wouldn't wish this on his worst enemy and so uh it is real uh this virus is really real and uh, i know that some people don't believe that it's real but it's real and it's, especially when it affects you personally i want to ask you uh elder watkins uh since we've been out of church uh how has uh it affected you as an individual and uh, how do you see yourself in God now since we've been out of church for me it has caused me to really establish a greater relationship with God uh, because I'm having to be sure mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I have that relationship and I'm praying more Sometimes you can get accustomed to coming into the sanctuary 
and uh, sometimes in the midst of that, you start relying upon other people's prayer or the atmosphere of corporate prayer. But when situations occur in your life and you're not able to get into the house, you understand that the same God that is in the church is in your house. Yes. And that you can tap into him and you can feel his presence just as strong in your house as you can in the church. Uh, also, it has really caused me to realize I'm a thinker. I'm yes. a thinker. So, you know, I, I, and, I've been, and I've been asking God a lot of questions here lately. I said, Lord, why all of a sudden now? Why? Why? You know? Uh, and, and, you know, sometimes I think we get so comfortable coming into the building. Yes. You know, yes. and we become sometimes kind of uh, complacent. We can, you know, and, and, and I believe that sometimes what God has to do for us is to shut the building down, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, we looked at the building from so many different facets, you know, social gathering and, you know, making connections and everything that we lost kind of sight of God. Mm hmm you know, so for me, it has drawn me even closer to God than ever before. Not saying that I didn't have a relationship before, but I got a stronger, stronger relationship, relationship now yes. than I did before. And uh, I can't wait until I come back. But I believe when we come back, we'll be even more great, appreciative. Praise God, yes. You know, uh, we'll be more grateful that God has had mercy upon us and that God is yet keeping us. Now we're seeing the, 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 the true hand of protection on your life. Because when you see other people going through and it's like the storm passing over you, you know how he's yet passing over you and he's yet providing for you and he's yet comforting you and he's yet encouraging you. So for me uh, uh, it has really given me a greater appreciative and yes. made my relationship even more greater with God you know the Bible says where two or three is gathered in his name he's in the midst of them and I think sometimes what happens is when we're in the building we look at the building as being uh, God and, and not really looking at we are the kingdom of God we, we are the the, the God lies within us and wherever we go God is with us and we carry God with us and I just like you were saying I think sometimes that we are put more emphasis on the building than we really have on the kingdom of God that rests within ourselves and uh, I praise God that God is a revealer of the heart you know uh, Sister Ruth I was going to ask you the same question since you've been out of church how have it affected you, and how do you see yourself in God? I would have to answer that in the manner that it has caused me to self-reflect, to look at me. And a lot of times, since I'm single, it's only about me. Mm -hmm. But during this time, it has caused me to step back and to really allow the scriptures to come alive such as in all my ways acknowledge in all thy ways acknowledge you and him and he will direct your path so I'm able to say God what would you have me to do in this time of shut-in and what you what I thought I would be doing is not what God has had me to do mm -hmm. so it allowed me to not only um, self-reflect but to be able to be a blessing or not to be as selfish as I was with my time I'm not so much selfish with things but sometimes I'm selfish with my time yes. that I'm able to do what the scripture says when it says about going into the highways and the byways and compelling men to come you're able to now minister in ways that you at one time just left it to the preacher to minister mm -hmm. now you have to be the church and you have to be the preacher so whether it's on a social platform whether it's on the phone whether it's your neighbor 
now you are the one that is ministering to those people that you may not have ministered to because you were so busy doing busy work and not necessarily kingdom work. So it made you reach out more to others. Definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's, it's the Bible declared that let every man examine himself to see whether he's in the faith or not. And I believe that this time has really caused us uh, to really search ourselves and, and, and God is, is really revealing our hearts and what is really important uh, because some things we thought that was important really wasn't important. And then sometimes we think we're really doing the work of God when we really wasn't doing the work of God. We were just going through the motions, you know. But God has a way of bringing us around because he did call us by his name. And God really wants us in his kingdom. Anyone else want to, wants to uh, address that? How that, since we've been out of the church, how has it affected you and how it, it has affected your ministry? Um, for as me, uh, it has caused me to talk to God more. And not only talk to him, because my prayer is, God, I want more of you and less of me. And it's caused me to really hear what God speaks to me. And, you know, I was in a conversation with him, and then, you know, I said, God, what is it that you're really trying to show us and tell us and lead us to? And he, he's told me, he said, look, he said, if you can go through this, can you praise me when nobody's looking? Can you still give your shout when nobody's there but you? Can you yet lift me up? Can you give me the glory that's due my name? Not only in the sanctuary, but in your home, can you yet praise me? And, and it caused me to say, yes, Lord, and to understand that it ain't about the building, but it's about the Lord that's in the building. It's about the God that's in our life and the kingdom that he's bringing us into. It's not about this building, even though the building matters, but it's about his kingdom. And if I can praise him in my house, yeah, I can praise him when I get here, and my praise will be stronger than before. Yes. And that's the way I feel about God. Yes, yes, it's... It's, the Bible says what is done in secret, God will reward you openly. And I'm finding out that it takes you from uh, the position of hypocrite because now it's just you and God. And when you can praise God, when you can study the word of God, when you can have conversation with God, and we don't uh, pray as the hypocrite did to be heard because ain't nobody there to hear you and you're seeking the face of God. Uh, God has really, I believe, really is trying to show us what it really means to live for him, what it really means to be an individual in God, uh, that when we do come back together, uh, we will have a different insight. We will, we will see. I, I reminded of the story when Jesus was praying for the man. He said, how do you see men? And he said, I see men as trees. And Jesus had to pray for him again. Sometimes you got to go back and pray again. And then when, when he prayed again, he said, now how do you see men? He said, I see them as they are. And I think sometimes God has to bring us back even in ministry and pastoring and all that we have to come back and see people as they are to be able to meet a need where they're at. And uh, it, has, it has caused me to really search and really, really look at the needs of people even deeper. You know, being able to reach out and being able to uh, bring yourself out of this selfish mold uh, that you can find yourself in. Uh, praise God. And, and, and two, you know, that's true. You can praise God in your home when ain't nobody else there going from room to room or, and just lifting your hands and praising God. Can't you imagine when you come back and God brings us back, in which I do believe he's going to. Uh, I don't think he's going to leave us like this always. Uh, and, and it's going to make us appreciate God even more uh, than we do. Uh, anyone else? Sister Bell. Yes, I was going to say the same, some of the same things, that it was a self-examination for myself of what I was doing before the pandemic and what am I doing now. And so now it has pushed me into not being selfish also. I don't say that I was a selfish person because mm -hmm. I stayed to myself a lot, 
but to see the needs of other people, like you said, uh, not to take for granted uh, the God bless you that you saw from the saints. Hello, good morning, how you doing? You miss those things, and then there are some saints that I don't have contact with, and so now I'm like, I should have been closer to the saints. I should have checked on them more. I should have, you know, said hi to certain people. So it made me realize that I have to come out of my comfort zone and be more attentive to the people's needs within the church. So now that we're outside and I'm doing that more, I want to continue to do that when we come back together to be more concerned about the saints and be more appreciative of who's here. Don't overlook anybody and just be concerned about the saints. Yeah, you know, the Bible said, with loving kindness, have I drawn you? And, and sometimes uh, it's not that we don't love. Sometimes we can be so busy that we miss uh, meeting a need or we miss reaching out. Uh, and uh, we, in that way, you miss people, you know. Uh, sometimes we take for granted that that person is going to be there. But now when you don't see them, you know, it's, it's a little different now. Uh, uh, praise God. So uh, I am, uh, I have confidence that the Lord is going to meet the needs and that the Lord is going to bring us back. Praise God. But it's in his timing. Everything is in a due season. You know, uh, I, I want to ask this. Uh, where do you see the church at this time? Where do you see the position of the church at this time? Because it's something new to us. We've never been through this before. We've never been in my lifetime where we have been able to come into the house of God. And I know there's a lot of controversy. There's a lot of, a lot of things going, saying that, you know, uh, you don't believe God, don't trust God because you're not coming uh, to the house of God. Um, the rights of the church is being threatened uh, in that we need to get back uh, into the house of God uh, but my view is is that I love my brother I love my sister and I don't want to put them in harm's way uh, and that uh, if if I've got to depend on coming to the house of God to love God and to have God then I really don't I never really had him so so where do you see the position of the church at this particular time Brother, any, any one of you, just any one of you. I see the church right now in a place of waiting. Uh, it's almost like when a woman is pregnant, mm -hmm. just before the birthing of the baby, she gets into a place of waiting. And right before, I've never had a baby, but, you know, <laughs> I have five children, but I've seen my wife go through the pain. Yes that she has to go through before the baby is being born. And I see right now with the pain that is in the world, all the pain that the world is going through right now with this pandemic and everything else that's going on with it, that the church is in a place like awaiting for a rebirthing. I believe that right now we're in the best time for revival because uh, we're all hungry now. We're getting hungry. We're getting hungry for uh, a, a move of God. And because right now, none of us know what God is going to do. Absolutely. None of us, you know. And, and we're all, you know, we, sometimes you can get kind of, you know, uh, uh, get accustomed to certain things going on. You just take it for granted. And it, it, it destroys your, your expectation. Yes. But when now we're all anticipating what, what the next move is going to be, and only God knows what and when. God knows the next move, Praise and God. God knows when he's going to move. But from the church's perspective, we're at a place of, Lord, God, if you let me get back in it again, you know, if you do it for us again, God, you know, we're, 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 you know, as far as wanting to do the work, wanting to minister, wanting to serve in ministry, wanting to do the things, I don't know about you, but to do the things of God and do it the way God want it done versus the way I think he want it done. Absolutely, yes, 
Yes. So now I'm seeking God. Lord, how do you want me to do this? I get up every morning and I go out walking. And my first prayer is, is Lord, how can I put a smile on your face when I'm walking? God, what can I do to make you happy? <laughs> Praise God. You, you, you know, uh, and these are the things. I ask God this every morning when I'm walking down the street. Lord, how can I make, put a smile on your face today? God, what can I do? Reveal unto me what I can do that can bring, make you happy, that can give you glory. So, you know, so I believe God has the church now, the body of Christ, in a place of waiting, ready for a rebirthing. And I believe that as if once we are birthed out, would be greater than what we was before. Praise God. Sister Rudolph. I see the church as, it, at, at this particular time, kind of, sort of like um, what Elder Watkins said, in a waiting period. But I also see the need for the church to get in a place where it comes together in unity. Because the spirit of division has been l released in the atmosphere. You can see it from the White House down to the Poor House. Right. There's the spirit of division that has been released, but it's going to take the church to unite. And I believe that God has separated us at a time like this that we can put on strength, that we can come together in unity and pray because it's the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous that's going to avail much. And the White House is not going to be able to fix this pandemic. The White House is not going to be able to fix racism. It's going to take God. And we that know God and know the words of prayer have got to get down to business with God in prayer in order for him to turn this situation. And I think we have had so many programs going on in church and and, re Absolutely. And, yes. and, and those type of things that we've kind of lost what the mission of the church was. We were consumed with our own agendas and now God has said, okay, you've made idols out of, you know, uh, sports people. You made idols out of um, the, uh, the, the movie stars. All of these things you have made idols. Out, and I am a jealous God. So I'm going to shut all that down. I'm going to let you not be able to do any of that. And, 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 and now I want you to turn towards me. And he said, if we turn at his reproof, he'll pour out his spirit upon us. Yes, he did. And we need the spirit of God to be poured out upon the church that we can, as a body, come together and pray and God move like he wants to move for us. Absolutely. Anyone else? I know there was a concern uh, with the church as far as us not being able to come into the house of the Lord, that there might be a fall away of people uh, not coming back to church because they just didn't have what it takes. But I don't think God has allowed this to happen and lose the people of God. And we have more res resources now to be able to stay connected. We got more church online, we're online, we have prayer. And so I think it depends on what your standings was before it happened, uh, that you have some strength to be able to hold on through this time. But we have everything that we need um, as far as the word goes and prayer and things like that. So you might have a few that might fall away but hopefully we will be there to be able to restore those. But I think that the church is in a good place uh, that we don't lose what we have. Okay. Well, uh, I was thinking as uh, Sister Rudolph was talking, and, and I believe we're at a place of rest. And the reason I say that is, is God, we, we often come into the house of God and you hear people say, well, I'm so tired. But mm -hmm. God now is giving you a time to rest. Get your body together, get you a healthy appetite, and get the, yourself together because when we do come back, we're going to be running. People are coming, and we're going to have to be able to serve this community with what God has for us to give to them. And, and the way God is doing it, we, we had a question once before we, we shut down, is how do I reach the millennials? Well, social media now is reaching everybody. Even the millennials, they are tuning in, they are hearing the word of God, they are voicing their comments, and, and God is doing great things just over the air. 
But think about what he's going to do when we come back together. And the thing that, that God wants us to understand is that when we come back, we're coming back in power. We're coming back with understanding. We're coming back with love. And, and that's the thing that God is, is really dealing with us about. I hear it all the time. And whenever I hear uh, my leader, he talks, he said, look, God wants us to be unified. And that's what he wants. So when we come back, just watch what God does. Praise God. I, I really see the church in a vulnerable position. I, I see that the Bible speaks of us preaching the same thing, saying the same thing. But you see a division even in the church world. And I, I, I'm a firm believer that we need to pray for our leaders uh, as we go through. But if you see what the enemy is doing in the church world, that's supposed to be saying the same thing, preaching the same thing, you see the divide. You see the divide in the world. You see the divide among leaders, church leaders, that uh, we have so focused on uh, the Democrats, the Republic, the Independent, that we fail to focus on righteousness. And the church is supposed to focus on righteousness. And if we're not careful as a church world, a church body, we're going to commit idolatry because we're going to choose a party. And believe me, I believe that everybody needs to vote. I believe this is the very crucial time. I believe that you need to get up. If you're going to protest, if you're going to walk on the streets, if you're going to commit yourself to protesting in the midst of a pandemic, then we need to do everything in our power to vote. And you need to get up and vote. But I believe that the church, if we're not careful, we're gonna find ourselves in idolatry because we're going to choose uh, uh, parties rather than righteousness and, and God is about righteousness and what I love about God is this right here he says God doesn't call up on everybody he said if my people so God has a people and everybody is not his people and then the Bible says believe not every spirit but try the spirit and, and we, we, I believe that God is trying to bring, as, as you all were saying, God is trying to bring a unity, but he's trying to bring a unity among the people of God. And as he brings unity among the people of God, it will kick out the spirit of division because where the spirit of division and strife is as every evil work. And we can see it working every day. And I just believe that God... Uh, I think it, Elder Watkins or Sister uh, Rudolph was saying God is trying to bring the church back to its original purpose and the original purpose of the church was the saving of the lost because Jesus came to save the lost sheep of, of, of Israel he, 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 he's about the lost and then he's about his kingdom and we've got to be about kingdom work if we're going to really be of God. And so I believe that God is, is, is trying to get his kingdom together. And as we seek the face of God, we seek the face of God for the kingdom work. And uh, uh, I just believe that uh, God is going to have a church. He said he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Uh, he's coming back for his church. And if he's coming back for his church, then he, that means there's people that's going to be in his church. Praise God. So uh, I really do appreciate you all at this time being candid, being open, and, and speaking uh, to uh, uh, the people of God, people that are in trouble because we have a lot of people that are in trouble. Believe me, uh, you've got people in the body of Christ that's talking suicidal, you see. And I believe this is the time for the church as never before, not only to seek God, but to reach out and, and, and to reach out with, with, with love because God is love. 
and uh, uh, the Bible says uh, perfect love cast out all fear and so uh, uh, I believe that as we do that we're going to come back stronger we're going to come back richer in the spirit we're going to come back with a greater insight and uh, with a greater power of love that will be able to draw Thank you for joining us today. We pray that the service was a blessing to you. If you'd like to learn more about All Nations House of Prayer, or if you would like to give to our ministry, please visit our website at curlingministries.org. Until next time, may God bless you and may God keep you is our prayer. Thank you.